Hi, I'm Scott. I'm going to show you how I built this shadow box on Dad It Yourself. So the project I'm going to be building today is a simulated propeller blade from a P3 Orion naval aircraft. In a world of jet aircraft, the propeller holds a special place in our hearts for those of us who work on the Orion. Normally this propeller blade is over six feet long and to make economics of scale, I scaled it down to four feet so I could get multiple blade blanks out of a sheet of plywood. I have access to the official Navy documents, so I was able to download those drawings and then scale them using an Adobe Acrobat program and print it out in these tiled poster formats and print it out. As I'm getting started on this project, welcome to Data Yourself. If you're new or haven't done so yet, consider supporting my channel by subscribing. Using this Ryobi P523 cordless jigsaw, I can use this to cut out all the blanks that I've marked out on the plywood.
I'm using my Ryobi P305 cordless glue gun to laminate the three blanks together. I would normally have used Woodworkers two-sided tape, but I didn't have any. If you're interested in this tool or any other tools you see in this video, there'll be a link in the description. So now I'm doing the markings for the different layers. The first one I'm marking out is the face frame, which is just an outline of the prop. The second layer includes a integral flag holder. And then the fourth layer is just a half part of the fairing to give it some depth and length. I'll cut these out using the jigsaw and then sanding them down as I did before and then routing those edges. So my two-sided tape finally came in and I'm assembling the shadow box together to get an idea of how all the layers fit together. This gives you an idea of the depth of the unit and how the different layers interact with each other from the flag holder to the face frame to the back. So now I'm working on the face frame. I'm going to start by rounding over the edges and then I'm going to flip it over, route the rabbit that will eventually hold the plexiglass face and then I'm going to drill the holes for the indexing pins which are made out of 3 8 inch dowels. In the future I think I'd probably use like a near earth magnet or something similar to that. The dowels still showed through the face frame in the finished product and it wasn't as clean as look as I would have wanted.
So it's time to start the glue up. I already glued the half piece fairing on the bottom and now I'm going to be gluing the middle section to the back. And the face frame is on there, but it's not glued down. It's just on there for structural purposes. So I began shaping the backside with the 18 volt grinder with a sanding disc on it. This ended up being a challenge for one that the 18 volt grinder didn't hold up very well with battery power and I ended up going through four batteries in less than 15 minutes. So I ended up going to Home Depot and picking me up a corded version of this grinder as well as a hand planer which really did quick work of this. Now that all the grinding's done, I started my sanding with this orbital sander, starting at 80 grit, moving my way through 120, 150, and ultimately to 220. Now that all the sanding's done, I did the first coat of primer, which is an automotive filler primer to help fill in the dings and some of the imperfections with the plywood laminate. I did two coats of the primer and then filled in all the dimples, divots, and imperfections in that primer, and then two more coats of the primer and burnished and sanded that with 200 and 400 grit until it was smooth. So from here it was just a matter of masking and painting each of the colors which were black, two tones of silver, a white and a red on the prop tip itself. 
I must have been so frustrated with the process of taping and masking that I actually forgot to film most of it, but you'll get the idea from here. I cut out stencils on my Cricut stencil maker to mimic the writing that's on the actual prop. Uh, masked it out, sprayed it with flat white paint, and then peeled the stencil off. And with that, all the painting was done. And as you can see, all the masking has been removed, and you can see all the different colors of the prop and what it looks like and it's finished. Moving on to the base, it's just a matter of primer and paint and stenciling, and then that'll be done. This is a Lazy Susan type contraption that will rotate the shadow box front and back. for the shadow box is a piece of eighth inch Luan cut to shape to fit inside and then sprayed with 3M 77 spray adhesive. A piece of blue felt is laid on that and then trimmed to size.
One of the major steps of this project is actually the assembly of the shadow box. So I'm going to install the felt back, put in a gold braided rope using hot glue, and then install all of the awards, unit patches, and other items of sentimental value that Senior Chief gave me for his shadow box. The next step is preparing the plexiglass for the face frame. That was a matter of just putting the face frame down, tracing its interior outline, adding 3 8 of an inch for the rabbit that I had cut earlier, cutting that out, cleaning it up on the bench sander, and then gluing it in with super glue. The folded American flag goes into its spot and then I install the face frame.